Hey everybody, welcome back to Covers and Commentary and welcome back to another episode of Drummer Reacts. Now, this video is going to be a little different because I realized that I've kind of talked about it a little bit and I made a cover from this artist. Oh my god, you're underhanded, listen to this beating heart, here are the creep of faltery, the only reality. But I've never really brought my fandom of this artist to the channel too much. And this artist's name is Jin. Uh, he is a, an artist from Japan who is responsible for what I would say is my favorite Vocaloid project of all time, the Kagro project. In fact, I love it so much that I have a mask of one of my favorite characters from the Kagro project tattooed on my wrist. I'll probably put a better picture up than just holding it in front of the camera. But Jin has made some incredible music and I try whenever I can to listen to the new stuff. And there's a song that I haven't listened to yet uh, because I've been really busy and haven't had a chance to sit down and do it. So I figured I'd do that with you all now. It is a song called Juvenile, and it seems to be a partnership with Pokemon, which is pretty cool. And it's another Vocaloid song by Jin. And I just, I'm so excited to listen to it, analyze it, break it down with you all. And yeah, let's just dive right in. I'm so excited. Let's do this. Mm-hmm. Already like the art style. It's very studio shaft. <laughs> oh, it's an Eevee, all right. <sighs> I wanna listen to that again. Already, I'm just getting the vibes that I I love with his music. So something you'll hear, I'm going to play it back again, but it kind of starts out nice and relaxing with sort of a clean electric play guitar, just very clean sound, kind of twangy. And you hop right into a really well-spaced mix. We'll, we'll listen to this opening again, and then I'll explain the mixing that I've heard just from the start already. So one more time. And hearing his music is just so nostalgic for me. Like, this is what got me into this genre of music with Vocaloid. <laughs> that energy, I love it. So here, I'll pause in a second. Yeah. Project Voltage, interesting. <laughs> yep, that's Hatsune Miku. So, okay, so to get back here, I wanna to listen to this whole open bit again, not the, like, where it gets to the, the good mix. So, something you'll notice, and I wanna, I'm gonna shut up when I play this next part again here, and I want you all to listen. There is something I've noticed a lot with the way that he, with the way the music is mixed with, with Jin's music in general, where there's always a use, or not always, but most times, a lot of times, I should say, there is a use of acoustic guitar somewhere in there, and you can hear a very clean acoustic guitar very heavily in the right ear. And then something else, and this is something I've noticed with other music from the Kagero Project and, and others, is a very heavy emphasis on the spacing in the mix for the drums. So the snare and bass are always very central in the track. If you listen, it's very centered for you. And then the cymbals usually have, usually feel like they're much more spaced out than other tracks I've heard, where like bass and snare, very central, Ride, crash ride, you hear it really heavy in the right. Crash, you hear very heavy in the left. And the hi-hat is super separated over to the left. This track more so than some of the ones I remember, but either way, that is something I've seen in his music a lot. The other thing is there's that bit of synth that they have in the background mixed in with the bass that's kind of center left with the with this uh, bass and then the synth kind of mostly central. So I'm going to shut up here and I want to hear you all, or I want to, I want you all to hear that now that I've explained sort of the mixing. This is pretty cool. Oh, I misspoke. That's not synth. It's 
electric guitar, and I misspoke on the direction, which is that it's on the right, but either way, yeah, we'll keep playing. You can hear the mixing a bit better. There's guitar on the, yeah. And then everything brings it to the center. This is the lead into the chorus, I guarantee it. I want to make a guess. I'm going to go back here to this midpoint leading into the chorus. Just based on my experience with his music, I guarantee you it's going to hop into the chorus on an offbeat. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, started right at the top. Oh, no, Evie. This is so nostalgic, even though it's only a four month old song, like got a nice break. This is so good. Whoa! This is something else is really leaning into the high pitched bass lines. So listen to this breakdown again. You can hear the bass line go really high up. Uh, here, have a listen. Wow. Uh, oh, that was some double bass action going on there. I love this art style for this, too. on halftime. Oh, I love this. I love this. Oh. All right, I'm going to go back to the start of this. I just want to hear this whole solo uninterrupted because this is so good. Also, before anybody comments, I considered when I first loaded this video up, I wanted to look at the subtitles to see the meaning because Jin's music always has really good meanings, though my guess is it's probably along the lines of what is written, what what they write, what Jin writes a lot in his music, which is um, generally about, you know, growing beyond your past or, you know, being comfortable with who you are or maturing as a person, you know, going forward into the future with friends. I guarantee you that's what this is about to some degree, just because that always seems to be an overarching theme or a lot of times seems to be an overarching theme with his music. But there are no subtitles available. I tried. I tried, but there aren't any. So I'll have to look up the lyrics myself later. But for now, let's hear that solo uninterrupted again. Mm -hmm. With the solo sort of centered to the track, that's nice. And you can hear the drum spacing, too. Got some piano in there. Th 
This is mixed so well as well. This is so good. Wait, is this supposed to be... Is this character supposed to be Miku? Oh yeah, because that looks like Rin. Yes! That's the other thing. So, hey, God, he's so good at mixing these vocals in Vocaloid, mixing the, the way it's written. So, you've got this, like, it's not harmonized, it's octave differences of, like, the low and the high, and you've got the two in line with one another, mixed almost equally but separated in track. So you have almost equal leveling, but left to right instead, which I really... I like that. I like that. Yeah. It is supposed to be Miku. She's got the pigtails now. Yes! With the headphones. Oh, one more time with that drum. Sorry. I love that. That's a smooth chorus transition, too. Let's one more time with that chorus transition. No. There. Just nice and clean into the... Yes! Yeah. And there's Rin or Lin, one of the two. That's awesome! I bet you. Yep. Ooh. Ooh. Also, what did I say? I said always something to do with overcoming your past or growing as a person. And sure enough, there is a future or, or present self going and comforting past self. I knew that. I knew that that was what this was going to be about. And I love it. I love it. And then, yeah. That double bass at the end. Yeah. And Evie starts evolving. Oh. Oh. It's just, it's a wave of nostalgia every single time. Every single time I hear music from Jin. And I said that art style was very Studio Shaft looking, which makes sense considering that the Mechaku City Actors anime was made by Studio Shaft, but like, what a beautiful song, what a beautiful video. God, I hope Nintendo doesn't come after me. <laughs> but it was so amazing. What a great, great song. Gosh, that was so good. Man, like I said, this, this has been, this is a fandom of mine that I've just, I mean, my whole love of Vocaloid music started with Jin, hearing the Kagura Project, hearing all these different songs. Yobunashi Deceives is my favorite song of all time. The message behind it just speaks to me as a person, which is why I got the tattoo. You, you've got just so many, oh God, so many good songs. <sighs> Moonlight Recital, just... If you haven't listened to the Kagura Project, I highly recommend it. I might do a video breaking down like my top 10 favorite. Let me know if you all in the comments, let me know if you all want me to do a, a video of like my top 10 favorite uh, Kagura Project songs, like my top 10. I would happily do that. I did that once on an, on my, my tech channel because it wasn't a tech channel at the time, but I might do it again and I'm pretty sure it'll be the same, but let me know in the comments. Either way, Thank you so much for watching. I will, as always, link this video in the description. Go check it out if you want to see it. And of course, I have the original artists channel linked down there as well. Go show some love. Such an amazing artist. The, the entire group involved with this was just mm, so good. I got goosebumps. It was that just, just wave of nostalgia for me, and I love it. So thanks again for watching. If you want to support the channel, go ahead and give this video a like and maybe subscribe. Uh, every Monday and Friday I do these videos, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Again, thank you so much for being here, and have a good one.